strikes. Header! Goal! Incredible! From the best, I'm going to say it, someone else has already said it, the best goal pass game ever. On July 15th, 2015, at the CONCACAF Gold Cup, Trinidad and Tobago took on Mexico. The score was 4-3, and it looked like Trinidad and Tobago threw away the game. But in the 92nd minute, with bottles being thrown, hostile crowds, and the game apparently lost, this happened. In what can only be described as pure poetry, Johansen Marshall equalized. The perfect manifestation of determination. Johansen Marshall has had quite a journey. Donning the jersey of the LA Galaxy, Murcielago's FC of Mexico, and also facing off Leo Messi on the pitch with his national team. Excited game, it was the best game in World Cup history. And uh, there were quite a bit of bottles being thrown at everybody. I actually got hit in the face. Wow, I'll tell you what, that was probably the most emotional game I've ever witnessed. Um, that game was, I think that was in one of the best games Trinidad ever played. So it's, it's quite a history-making goal, if you want to call it that. Yeah, it was an exciting game. It was the best game in World Cup history. Wow, what a football match that was. We had one more chance. This is, this is it. It's now or never. I didn't see the cross coming over from Jovin, but as soon as it came over the first defender, I picked up sight of the ball and that was it. I started celebrating before it hit the back of the net. The, the moment would, would actually live with me forever. It was, it was simply fantastic. It was just euphoria. It was a great, great, great moment. Emotional roller coaster. That was close to, to crying. I could touch. The game was just so crazy. I remember when he scored that goal, I was celebrating like I was on the field. I was running around in my room. It was ridiculous. Outrageous header against one of the top keepers, not only in CONCACAF, but in the world. It was an emotional roller coaster. I have to say credit to him for, for coming up at that moment. Um, that would, that's what you want your, 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 your teammates, your big players to do. And he stepped up in that moment. But like you said, the, the game in itself, I think, had everything that um, you would want from a football match. The top CTV. Um, suspends the, the, the thrilling moments and rightfully so it should be recorded as one of the, the best football games in not only Gold Cup um, history but I think in world history as well. If you look from the 85th minute we were in good spirits and then the two goals came from Mexico so we kind of hung our heads and then just this last gasp um, header was joy, pure ecstasy. But before we move forward, there is more to Johansi than meets the eye. Johansi also has his own line of grooming products from his company called Classy Gents. It's a men's grooming line, uh, Classy Gents, men's essentials and accessories. And we have beard oils, beard balms, um, beard wash and handmade combs. We are all over social media, um, Instagram at ClassyGensTT, and we also have some locations around the country that carry our products. Many people do not know this, but in addition to his colorful journey, Johansi is one of the founders of the mentorship organization, the Kanbu Play Foundation, who recently have worked with the US Embassy to reach out to communities in his country. The other foundation that we have, myself and six other football players, um, is called the Cambo Play Foundation. And we basically want to give back to our communities. We all came from different backgrounds and we are going into different communities, running clinics, doing educational programs and also doing mentorship programs. Um, and it's just us trying to give back before we leave the game um, and just trying to shed a positive light on the negative that is going around the country right now. Um, well, it wasn't my first experience in that kind of environment. Same thing, you have to try to blank out, but just that atmosphere, the atmosphere from the fans.
they are cheering and the high profile players, you know, you look at them week in, week out on the TV and to know that you're going to play against them, that's something special. But you now have to refocus, prepare for that match, you know, so you just have to be focused and say we're going to have or try to have a good game and try to keep them at bay. Two was right before the half when De Maria kind of Messi played a true ball for De Maria and he got past Jan. In my mind, I was like, you know what? I think a lot of people thought it was a goal. For some reason, didn't give up again and fought to get back and luckily slid at the right time to get the ball out before Leo Messi put it in the back of the net. I was scared for, for Jovin. A lot of the fans were throwing stuff on the field at, at Jovin when he was about to take that uh, corner. With the hostile environment with Jovin, it was a little poor on the Mexican part, throwing bottles, etc. You could just sense the tension, the way how the game just rocked back and forth. You knew that something, something might have happened. Um, I didn't see it initially during the game, um, but just that's the part of the game we want to get out. You have to look at it, or I looked at it as they're trying to distract us. Yeah, a lot of thoughts was going through my mind, you know. Um, yeah, first time I was in a situation like that, you know, with the petting of the bottle and coins and bears and stuff, you know, but at the end, I keep my composure, I keep my cool and was only focusing to put the ball in the right area for my teammates, which I did. Plastic bottles be it, but still heavy with water. And one had actually hit me in the face and they were, they were pouring down on, on Jovin and he just he just hurried up and, and, and took, the, took the corner. Just all these fans started just throwing all these bottles and I didn't understand it because the, the officials, they, was, they wasn't even making a big deal of it. It was just like, it was just, just like whatever, get on with it. Who does to him? He managed to stay focused and get the ball into the, the, the perfect area where we wanted to attack. So I can only imagine how he must have felt. The mental strength, especially after playing 90 minutes, to come at the end in there to cross that ball, takes a lot. It's something that needs to be stamped out. I think, well, very rarely or if ever, you, you wouldn't come to Trinidad and, and find something like that happening. But everywhere that we go, every other country, we tend to find that type of behavior happening and it's something that needs to, to get out the game. For Jovin, he, def he deciphered all the bottles coming down on him, being hit or not being hit and he just focused on putting in a great cross. A lot of guys will be affected by it but it's how it affects you. It can either affect you negatively or positively and I think that day it affected the, the guys positively. The ability to have that that mental focus, that discipline, to stay alive in a game till the very last second is what all the work on the training field is about. But for him to keep his mind and be disciplined enough to be like, throw that away and uh, make that perfect cross. To then step up, have the courage to step up, you know, whipping a great ball and for your auntie to get on the end was just an awesome feeling. And he put in a lovely cross, and like I said, I made eye contact with the ball, I didn't lose sight of it, and it was in the back of the net. It was a culmination of all our hard work leading up to that, that point. Um, a lot of people didn't see what was going on in the background, but we stuck together as a team, as a family, and we worked for each other, and 
I think it showed in how we were playing. And they all have that kind of determination factor in them. What you, you train to do all your life is to play and work within those moments. To see the determination, the passion, to continue to go, to go to the final whistle, that shows to me, you know, that, that bunch of guys was, they were focused and they, they was, even though the odds was against us, playing against a powerhouse in, in the CONCACAF. Definitely what we saw there is the ability or the professionalism of, of our players to be in an environment like that, down in a game, and be able to keep the focus and the discipline and, and get that one last chance in the game and tie the game up. It, at no point in time, even though we went down, we didn't feel as if, you know, we were beaten um, and it was too far to come back for us. The confidence we had in each other, the atmosphere we had for each other, and I think it just showed in, in our football. And I think Trinidad started to believe again in how we were playing at that time. We were out to show on that day that we were, or we are a footballing nation that is coming back to the top. The, the feeling was unbelievable because we really wanted to win the group. You know, after everything that he just went through, shut down the whole stadium, you know. Because like I said, there was like 60, 70,000 Mexican fans. It was a great game for the fans. It's not a good game for my heart. So it was good to know that we were believing in ourselves and from, from how we were playing, Trinidad started to also believe in us. They are very focused, determined individuals and it just showed how much they wanted it and it showed the passion that they had for the game. And they were focused, they were on a mission. Have all that adversity against you, but you fight back. Never give up until the final whistle. Always be determined, try to put your best foot forward and be that person to try to make the change. Um, it's the last few seconds, even if it's not the, the last few moments, always try to be the one to make a difference to your team. There are going to be outside elements that are going to try to distract you, but once you stay focused, you're going to get the job done. And then came that uh, ridiculous, outrageous header from Johansi Marshall. Um, I had a very good view of it. I wish I had uh, taken some, some footage, but my heart was in my hands at that point, so it would have been tough. It was an exciting game. It was the best game in World Cup history. If I could only go back and witness that game again, I don't think I'll ever, ever witness anything like that again. Him being a good friend of mine, I want to say that was probably the, his best footballing moment. But um, yeah, it was ridiculous. Outrageous header against one of the top keepers, not only in CONCACAF, but in the world, who's uh, Mimo Ochoa. And that was all she wrote on that day. And one of those games that you, you never really forget. And uh, I'm sure Johansi will never forget it. Fantastic game, fantastic moment. It was an incredible feeling, incredible goal. And as a footballer, you know, it was just one of the best games I could ever see in, 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 in Trinidad and Tobago football. It just, it was just written in the stars. And what a great game it was. So it's, it's probably one of the most perfect um, storylines you can find in football. A really proud moment for the country.